by Research Ocular Melanoma, sharing insights on research, treatment, and living with ocular melanoma. Please share this episode. It could save a life. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I am joined today by a special guest from T-Scan Therapeutics. This is Dr. Deborah Barton. She is a medical oncologist as well as the chief medical officer at T-Scan Therapeutics. Um, so Deborah, can you just tell us a little more about yourself, your career, and just really like what, what do you feel fueled by um, as far as what you do for a living? Thank you. And uh, first off, thanks so, so much for the opportunity to be here. And thanks for the invitation. It's, a, it's a, an honor. Uh, so since a very young age, I was always curious about cancer. And I would see, you know, famous people on TV who had cancer and then cancer spreads. And I just didn't understand it. And I wanted to understand the disease, why it happens, how it happens, what happens, and then understand treatments. What are the available treatments? And is it good enough? Is it not good enough? What else can we do to improve it? And that's interesting because I was very young when I started thinking about those things and I could never step away from it. So with that kind of desire to understand and to change, I went to med school and then I went to oncology fellowship and I really loved the mystery and the complexity and the, the need, the need to do something different and to create change. So I, I practiced oncology for a few years until I was offered an opportunity in a biopharmaceutical company where I was getting closer and closer to drug development, given that the current standard of care for me was not sufficient. I thought that we needed to discover new things. So that's what brought me to biotechnology and ultimately to cell therapy, which is what I'm doing today with T-Scan. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so can you just tell us what is, what is your role at the T-Scan Therapeutics Company and why did you decide to become part of their team? My role at T-Scan as the chief medical officer is to really guide and oversee all medical-related activities. So the company is an end-to-end -end company. We have a discovery platform. We have a manufacturing facility. So all of those end up in having a treatment going to a patient. So that interface of all that we do with the physicians that are treating the patients and ultimately the patients, it's my responsibility together with my team. So I have a team of physicians, clinical operations, regulatory uh, scientists who work with me to make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed. And so when the sites, the clinical sites or the hospitals receive the product, everybody's trained, everybody knows what to do. The right patients are enrolled in the clinical trials. And ultimately, the safety and the effectiveness of the product will be uh, carefully looked at. That's so awesome. And it's such a, it's such an intricate process. And I love how you described the, like that end to end where it's like from the very conception to when is it administered to the patient, but that you oversee all of that. Um, so can you just give us an overview? Um, can you give us an overview of T-Scan Therapeutics as a company? What's their mission? And uh, just kind of continue to tell us what do you guys do within your group? Yes, of course. Thank you. So T-Scan is a clinical stage biotechnology company focusing on the discovery, development, and clinical application of what we called TCR T-cell therapies. So those are engineered T-cells 
to contain a T cell receptor that will recognize and kill cancer cells. So the company came up from a premise that we should learn from patients with cancer who are exhibiting good responses to therapy. So we look at cancer patients with good responses and we study their T cells. Their T cells must be doing something right because the tumors are shrinking. So learning from those T cells, we figure out what are the targets of those T cells in the cancer cells. And then we are able to manufacture a T cell receptor against those targets. With that, we have two clinical trials. The first clinical trial is a leukemia study that has two different T cell receptors being studied. And that study is enrolling patients successfully. We are those escalating. We are not seeing any serious toxicities. And we have actually presented some data recently at the ASH conference. But for us here, the most important is our solid tumor study. The solid tumor study is a large basket study. So we are looking to enroll patients with several different tumor types, including uveal melanoma. And those patients, what we're going to do is that we're going to type the tumor. We're going to look at which targets those tumors express. And we're going to give that patient the TCRs that are most likely to recognize and kill those tumor cells. That's so neat. It's such a, um, a unique way to approach cancer therapies. I don't think, at least, at least in uveal melanoma, I don't think we have had anything like this before. So we are so excited that you guys are taking this on and that you're excited about it as well. Um, so speaking of uveal melanoma, what led T-Scan Therapeutics to work in the space of this rare disease? I would say on our technology platform and looking at the T-cells of patients who are responding to therapies and immunotherapies, we found several targets that are actually commonly expressed in melanoma and uveal melanoma. So we're building this immunobank of targets and T-cell receptors that target, for example, PRAIM, which is a well-known target that is highly expressed in melanoma. For ex about 90% of melanoma cancers express PRAIM. We also have in our immunobank TCRs targeting MAGE-C2 or mage a one those are also expressed roughly by 50% of melanomas. And so with those targets, we figure out which diseases most frequently express those targets. And that brought us to a basket clinical trial. So we want to be inclusive and we want to be able to treat whoever has a tumor that expresses the target. So we're very happy that at least three of our targets are highly expressed in uveal melanoma uh, cancers. Well, thank you. That's such a good explanation. Thank you so much. Can you tell us about this HLA typing? Like what is HLA typing and how is the HLA typing needed for your protocol different than that that was needed for like, say the Tebi or the Prem trial? Uh, and then I guess the, the second follow-up question to that would be, how, does the, how do the results of the HLA typing come into play in the development of your treatment? So HLA is the human leukocyte antigen. This is a piece of most of our cells in our body. And for that reason is that the testing is done with a simple buccal swab with a, just a cotton swab inside of your mouth. So it's very quick and easy, painless, because all the cells in the buccal mucosa, they have the HLA, so we can identify which HLAs the person will have. So the function of the HLA is actually to present 
on the surface of the cell, including the tumor cell or other cells in the body, something that needs to be recognized by the T cells. And then the T cells on their side, they use the T cell receptor to recognize that HLA in the tumor cell that is showing the target. So we need the tumor cell to have a certain HLA to show the target, and we need the T cells to have the TCR to recognize that and, and say, this cell needs to be killed, it's a cancer cell, and then the T cell will kill the cancer, the cancer cell. So this is how HLA work. HLA also works with virus infections, bacterial infections, anything else that a cell is uh, happening wrong to a cell to present to the T cells to recognize and kill those cells. Now, there is something very particular that happens sometimes in certain, certain tumors. So tumors, they want to evade that attack from T cells because the T cells, they kill tumor cells. But the tumor cells want to survive. So what they do is that they hide their HLA, which is called loss of heterozygosity. So a tumor cell can then lose that HLA, which makes the T cells incapable of recognizing that tumor cell. So we also test, we test not only for HLA in the study, but we also test for loss of heterozygosity. We want to make sure the patient has the HLA and the tumor cells remain with that HLA to properly present the target to the T cells. Okay. So uh, is it correct then that the HLA type that you guys are aiming for in the T-scan trial is not just one HLA type? You're looking at multiple? Yes, that is correct. So we are aiming to fill up the immunobank, not only with several targets of interest, but also with several HLAs, so we can have the biggest uh, population coverage possible. So currently, we have TCRs on HLA A0201 and on CO702. And now coming up in the end of the year, we, we are submitting two other TCRs, for one for B0702 and the other one for A0101. And those HLAs are very frequent in the United States population and also in Europe. We're currently only enrolling patients in the United States, but planning to, in the future, expand to Europe. So we really want to expand as max as possible to have as many patients uh, able to join the study. Awesome. Thank you so much. I feel like that's going to that's gonna be such a hopeful thing for patients to hear because it's been really isolating to hear, oh, there's only this one, this one HLA type. And if you don't have that, well, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is yeah. very hopeful and exciting news to see that you guys are making progress in this area. So can you tell us this pre-screening, this buccal swab um, that you guys have, why is the pre-screening for your trial an important thing for patients, physicians, uh, and their doctors and teams to be fully aware of? Yeah, this is something really interesting. Every physician that I talk to about the study, they are really happy that we have this option, uh, which is we know that all, doing all those tests can take a couple of weeks or even potentially three weeks sometimes. And that wait can be very disturbing and complicated for a patient that is currently experiencing disease progression. So what we are doing is separating the screening from the treatment protocol so patients can go through the screening procedures while they're receiving their current therapy. So they may be well responding, they may be doing very well in their current therapy, they can already provide a buccal swab. We will see if they have the HLA from the immunobank. And if they do one of those four that we just discussed, then we can look at their tumor sample. Meanwhile, patient is doing well, receiving their current therapy. 
So when we look at their tumor sample, if they have a historical biopsy sample that was collected just a few months ago, that can be used. So they don't necessarily need to get a new biopsy. So with all those materials, we are able to see if the patient would potentially be eligible to join the treatment study, even if it's later on. So even if they're doing well now and they don't need it, we test, we understand the patient profile, and then if in the future they need a new therapy, we will already know that they're eligible. That's such a, a great way of like forethinking and I love it. Um, and I love that it's, it's something that, you know, they can have this test done even if they're in current treatment for something, you know, some other treatment, some other trial that uh, I feel like will remove a lot of barriers. And I can see, I can see why that would be exciting for patients and physicians. Wonderful. So can you summarize some of the critical areas of research that you're focused on in addition to metastatic uveal melanoma? Of course. So as I mentioned before, our clinical trial is a basket study, which means we are also accepting patients with other tumor types that are likely to co-express one or two of the targets that we're developing our TCRs for. So that includes, for example, head and neck cancers, lung cancers, cervical ovarian cancers, and skin melanoma as well. So all those patients, they have different levels of expression of the targets of interest. And as long as they come into the study, we take the biopsy and we see that they express the target, they can be able to join our clinical trial. With our uh, proprietary platform, we can also look at targets for autoimmune diseases. For example, Crohn's disease, which is very well-known autoimmune disease. And so we, we, have a, we have a diverse look into different diseases that we can use our discovery platform to understand the targets, the TCRs, and potentially develop therapeutics. That's incredible. Um, so can you just tell us, what is your vision for the future of uveal melanoma? So what I think with our products, and I didn't have time here to dive deeper into the science, every cell therapy that we're developing is enhanced. So just briefly say our cells have a CD8 co-receptor and they also have a TGF beta dominant negative receptor too. Those things are a mouth, mouthful, but they mean that those cells are more likely to be efficacious. So we believe that being able to multiplex, for example, a patient whose tumors express both PRIM and MAJ1, they will be able to receive two TCRs, and all the TCRs will be with enhanced cells. So having all that together, we do believe that our product has the potential to create deeper and longer-lasting responses. This is what I personally want to see with the uveal melanoma patients in the study. Oh, I love it. And that would be, that would be absolutely incredible. And I look forward to seeing how this all develops in the, in the future. Um, so if patients or their physicians want to learn more about T-Scan and your current trial sites, uh, current screening sites, and or other research you have going on for uveal melanoma, where would be the best sources of information? So uh, on our website, tscan.com, you can find some information. But also, if you go to clinicaltrials.gov, and you can search for a T-scan, you're going to find the studies. Or there's the NCT numbers that I'm sure we can list on a link under uh, our podcast. So you can click 
there you will be able to see which clinical sites are open with, for the screening protocol, for the treatment protocol, or for both. Uh, and the last place that you can look at is a website called Leo Health. Leo Health will collect some of your information and your zip code, and so they can show you which clinical sites are open close to your home. That's fantastic. And we can absolutely include uh, all of those links listed in the show notes uh, to make sure that they are hyperlinked and accessible to people through you know, the YouTube video, just any of the ways that you can click these links, they will be there. Just for the sake of anyone taking notes, um, the, the NCT numbers that we have for the screening protocol are NCT 0581-2027. And for the treatment protocol, it's NCT 0597-3487. Um, and like, uh, like Deborah said, just make sure to stay up to date on their website as well as clinicaltrials.gov to make sure that you're in the know on which, which areas are open and as new sites um, launch. And I believe we have circulated some of the site announcements for various, for your screening sites. We circulated that on our social media platform as well. So we will continue to do that, you know, with, with any announcements that you guys have, we'll, we'll circulate those there um, in real time. So, so that is amazing. I'm so excited to continue to learn more about how your treatment protocol works and just kind of where you guys go this next year. Um, so Dr. Barton, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your hope. Um, is there anything you want to end with? I would just say that it's a pleasure and I'm very excited about this clinical trial and I can't wait to see the first few uveal patient melanoma, uveal melanoma patients being screened and enrolled and hopefully receiving our therapies very soon. Oh, it's so exciting. Thank you so much. And like, like she said, if you want to learn more, please check out the show notes and reach out if you have any questions. We'll see you guys next time.